This is the dispatch hall for Local 13, the International Longshore and Warehouse Union, where every single day, hundreds of port workers come to get their specific assignment for the upcoming shift. While it may look like chaos and action with boards flashing, dispatchers behind windows yelling out numbers, and hundreds of union members greeting each other, the fact is, it's an incredibly efficient process that takes less than an hour. What we do here is this is where we come to actually get our jobs. And it's dispatched in the daytime and it's dispatched in the evening. But we have to get here first in order to get the job that we are required to get on what board we're required on to go to the port. If there's five jobs and uh, there's uh, ten workers and uh, five people are not going to work that night, there's only five jobs. The next night, you have five jobs. Well, those other people who didn't work, they don't have any hours, they didn't work. So they're gonna get out first before the other people the day before got out. So it's a low man out type of system, it's very fair. We all share the work. That is the, 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 the reasoning of the low man, low man out. We all share the work. Not only one person is getting a job. Looking around the hall, you notice that there are different lines for different jobs. But what are these jobs? And what kind of skills do they require? I'm a third generation longshoreman, which a lot of us are. If you're into it and you know you got that knack, then you can pretty much I drive everything on the waterfront. They have a skill category, skill one, two, and three. A skill three job is a crane job, a trans job, anything that's a winch job, anything that's something to do with cables on a crane. Then they have skill level two, which is a forklift, a heavy lift, uh, a paper lifter, anything like that. But a skill one level is more manual going in the hole of a ship, on the ship lashing, pulling content cones and, you know, messing with the minor labor type things of the job, you know, so they have skill one, two, and three. Today, Local 13 represents almost 20,000 part and full-time workers who discharge cargo at both the ports of Long Beach and Los Angeles. Now, for some, becoming part of this specialized workforce is a family tradition, and for others, a lucky accident. One of my sisters is a, is a dock work, uh, drives a, a forklift, and another one drives a UTR, another one's a clerk, and my brother's a, uh, what does he do? I forget what my brother does, but my dad's a clerk, he's with a 63, so. <laughs> we're, we're not the typical ILW family, but uh, there's, there's several families that, uh, in the city of Wilmington or San Pedro or around this area that are basically the whole family of Longstorm. Back in 1993, they were having a lottery. And it just so happened that one day, early in the morning, I was driving down the street and I seen a lot of people grouping up together and I asked somebody, um, what are you guys doing? And they said something, they were having a lottery. So I kind of thought they were giving away money. So I said, well, what do you need to have to be in the lottery? And they said, all you need is a driver's license. I said, okay. So I went and put my driver's license in a box and I was the first name called out for me. Back when Harry Bridges started this union, clipper ships did not have regular sailings, and workers were often recruited at the last minute to load or unload cargo. Little skill was needed, only brute force and determination were required. Today, with the help of big machines and computers, the work has changed dramatically. When I came down, I was on a job doing something, and uh, the boss says, hey, you know how to drive that big tractor? I said, no, well, you're gonna learn today, and then, you know, you jump in it. Now, uh, we've learned that it's best to train people. That way they can see if they want to do the job, uh, what it involves, like my job is sort of dangerous. And uh, it's, a, it's a weird feeling driving and you got a 20 or 30 ton can up there and, and, and you're moving around like this. And so, like my sisters are trained for that, but they won't, they won't drive the machines. As soon as all the jobs were taken, the dispatch hall emptied quickly. Some driving to the ports to work, and well, others driving home without a job for that shift, but confident that within that month, they too would be low man on the roster. But what if something happened at the last minute and more workers were needed at the ports? No problem. Once dispatch gets a request, they turn to the daily hungry sheet. Say you didn't want to go to work at, during dispatch, you would sign a sheet called a hungry sheet. He goes through a hungry sheet, and let's say they need more people at work on three or four o'clock in the morning, they were missing some people and they needed some more help. He would exhaust his ways of going through a hungry sheet and calling people who signed in on the hungry sheet that didn't go to the regular night dispatch. And he would call them on the phone and ask them if they want to go to work. The dispatch hall is now empty, but early next morning, 6 a.m. to be precise, the whole process will begin again. 
making sure there is a strong, committed, and trained workforce to handle all the cargo that provides us with all the products we like and need, from grapes and bananas to clothing and computers. So next time you see the ILWU logo, remember, they are part of your everyday world. Moving the world's goods one container at a time, millions of times a year.